family it's time to pray and I'm going to look at Psalm 55 on today as we continue in our push and our overall thought of remembering the mind and heart of God in everything that we do and to grab a hold of the mantra of every believer every disciple every faithful follower in scripture to never stop praying don't stop praying we want that thought to arrest our attention and bridle our heart I want to read Psalm 55 in its entirety I want to read it out of the Passion Translation, and I want you to hear the passion of the text as we grab a hold of hope, as we can see the concept of hope defined for the believer. Remember that we've defined hope. We've looked and argued that hope is for the disciple, the undeniable expectation and giddy anticipation of the move of God despite the physical consequences, despite the emotional turbulence, and despite the spiritual attack that's going on all around you. And, and even in the context of one like David, for the believer, hope is directly correlated to the person of God. It is executed by the power of God. And so therefore your resolve 
is connected to the nature of God. For the believer, remember that as you think about hope and as you anchor in on hope, you and I are more focused on the object and not the outcome. That's the reason why we should never stop praying. Don't stop praying because as we tap into the spirit of what it means to be a people who go to God and remember what God can do, remember who God is, and remember what God will do as a result of who he is, you and I have hope unlike anything else or anybody else. So David teaches us that. Listen to the song. I'm going to read it out of the passion. Watch the words, hear the words of this text as they as they speak to your spirit. Listen to David. God, listen to my prayer. Don't hide your heart from me when I cry out to you. Come close to me and give me your answer. Here I am moaning and restless. I am preoccupied with the threats of my enemies and crushed by the pressure of their opposition. They surround me with trouble and terror. In their fury, they rise up against me in an angry uproar. My heart is trembling inside my chest as the terror of death seizes me. Fear and dread overwhelm me. I shudder before the horror that I face. I say to myself, if only I, I, if only I could fly away from all of this. If only I could run away to the place of rest and peace. I would run far away where no one could find me escaping to a wilderness retreat. I will hurry off to hide in the higher place, into the shelter safe from this raging storm and tempest. God, confuse them until they quarrel within themselves. Destroy them with their own violent strife and slander. They have divided the city with their discord. Though they patrol the wall night and day against invaders, the real danger is within the city. It's the misery and strife in the hearts of its people. Murder is in their midst. Wherever you turn, you find trouble and ruin. It wasn't an enemy who taunted me. If it was my enemy filled with pride and hatred, then I could have endured it. I would have just turned. I would have just run away. But it was you, my intimate friend, one like a brother to me. It was you, my advisor, the companion I, I walked with and, I, and worked with. We once had sweet fellowship with each other. We worshiped in unity as one, celebrating together with God's people. Now desolation and darkness has come upon you. May you and all those like you descend into the pit of destruction since evil has been your home. May evil now bury you. But as for me, I will call upon the Lord to save me and I know he will. Every evening I will explain my need to him. Every morning I will move my soul toward him. Every waking hour I will worship only him and he will hear and respond to my cry. Though many wish to fight and the tide of battle turns against me, by your power I will be safe and secure. Peace will be my portion. God himself will hear me. God enthroned through everlasting ages, the God of unchanging faithfulness. He will put them in their place. All those who refuse to love and revere him. I was betrayed by my friend, though I lived in peace with him. While he was stretching out his hand of friendship, he was securely breaking every promise he had ever made to me. His words were smooth and charming, yet his heart was disloyal and full of hatred. His words soft as silk while all the time scheming my demise. So here's what I've learned through it all. Leave all your cares and anxieties at the feet of the Lord and measureless grace will strengthen you. He will watch over his lovers, never letting them slip or be overthrown. He will send all my enemies to the pit of destruction. Murders, liars, and betrayers will face an untimely death. But my life, my life's hope and trust is in you. And you will never fail to rescue me. Amen. This text unfolds a number of things that David teaches us in the push to never stop praying. 
And I want to walk through three of them and offer us an application at the end. But David begins, you go back and look at this in detail. Look at it slowly and see the breakup of the text. But he opens up the text in the first three verses and we are able to see his confidence. He makes the statement in verse number one, God, give ear to my prayer. Oh God, don't hide your plea. Don't hide your face from my plea, from my mercy. And, and really what you ought to see in that is that David is reminding us that he's not brand new to going to God. He's not new in speaking to him. David practices the mantra of never stop praying. Don't stop praying, but have confidence like David to talk to God about whatever's going on. David taps into a historical foundation of going to God in prayer all the time. And you and I, must learn to be a people who will go to God with everything that's going on in your life, no matter what, because there are times where things will, number two, drop on you. Life has a tendency to just drop on you. Verse number three, he uses a verbal picture that describes just that. In verse number three, he says, because of the noise of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they drop trouble upon me and in anger they bear grudge against me they drop trouble upon me don't stop praying because life will drop trouble on you whether you want it or not life will drop trouble on you whether you're ready for it or not life will drop trouble on you whether you ask for it or not. Life will drop trouble on you whether you think you deserve it or not. So regardless of how it drops, when it drops, or where it drops, don't stop praying. Tap into your confidence like David. Know that life will drop things on you and be ready because when things drop, it has a tendency to devastate you. Verses four through five, David paints the picture of what's going on emotionally. And it's another reminder of why we should never stop praying. Don't stop praying because you will go through the emotional bouts, the ups and the downs, the highs and the lows, the turbulence of emotion. And I love this because even though we go through what we go through, God's not afraid, nor is he not God enough to handle what you go through. David uses at least four words to describe the emotional perplexity that every believer deals with. We deal with terror. We deal with trembling. We deal with horror. We deal with fear. We deal with anguish. All of them, when you deal with anguish and terror and trembling and horror and fear, the thing you need to remember is that God is not afraid He's not uh, upset. He's not bothered by the fact that his creature has emotional ups and downs. You are not less faithful because you tremble. You are not less faithful because you've got horror. You are not less faithful because you are afraid. You are not less faithful because you go through emotional bouts. The key when you go through what you go through is to remember that God will go through it with you. So don't stop praying even when life drops things on you. Don't stop praying when when your emotions begin to devastate you and move you and, and trouble you and bother you. And even when number four, when the internal dialogue starts happening, don't stop praying and don't think that God is not able to handle your emotional ups and downs. David had some internal dialogue from verses six all the way through verse 15. We get to see David demonstrate what it means to have authentic, real human emotion, but give it over to God. While he's dealing with what he's dealing with, David opens up and says, oh, you know what? I wish I had wings like a dove. I don't even want to be here. I would fly away and be at rest. I would just get up out this piece. All that I had with, and if you've ever been where David is, if you've ever had life come at you, just drop on you. And one thing after the next thing, the terror of life is sharp and mastering and causing you to be troubled. You, you begin to tremble in such a way that you are literally moved because of the emotion to where you involuntarily are shaking and nothing seems to warm you. You're not cold, but you're you're trembling. You're not, you're not in a frigid air, but you're trembling. Why? Because life emotionally moves you and you have moments where you are horrified, overwhelmed, and you just want to get up out this. I want to bounce, period. I wish I could disappear, David says. I wish I could just run away and be at rest. Then, then he flips it. Maybe, maybe I don't want to just bounce. No, no, no. 
Maybe, maybe I want to ride on some folk. I'm, I'm sorry, that was that was a little too secular. Maybe, maybe I want to fight. Maybe I don't want to flee. Maybe I want to fight. God, in fact, I do want to fight. I want you, I want you to start doing some stuff on my behalf. You see him talking in verse number nine. Divide the to cut the tongues, Lord God. Divide them. David is emotional and begins to go after what's going on in his heart. He lets this emotion out. He starts moving from the flight to the fight part of it. He gets angry. Watch though. Even in his anger, he gave it to God. David, you cannot go back and trace anywhere in scripture where David was, was radical and revenged himself to the enemies that he had. In fact, over and over and over again, David gave his enemies over into the hands of God. And even while he's emotional, he's giving the emotion he has about his enemy over to God. He's teaching us the reason why you should never stop praying. Don't stop praying because there are times when you want to fight and you can't do what goes against the word of God, but you can give the emotion over to your God. David said, you take it, Lord God. You do these things. Your will be done. I want to go off, but I'm leaving it up to you. David deals with all kinds of emotion where he wants to leave. He wants to fight. He wants he, he, he's afraid. He, he begins to be critical. He starts reminiscing over the fact that the pain that I'm feeling, verses 12 through 15, the pain that I'm feeling is betrayal. He brings it back up in verse 20 and 21. That's why my heart is breaking. It was my companion. It was one of my close friends who raised their hands up and broke bread with me at one time. And now they're breaking my heart. David is hurt. David is angry. David wants to leave. David turns it over to God. But then I love at the end of the text, the Passion Translation renders it um, in a very beautiful way. Look at the end of the text with me at Psalm 55 at the very end where he gets through it. We learn this last thing. If I'm, if I can't, if I can't give up, if I'm not supposed to let it go. If I'm not supposed to handle it myself, if David teaches me, don't stop praying, but, but make a decision to honor God. How should I do so? Notice he says at the end of the text, verse number 22. So here's what I've learned through it all. Leave all your cares and anxieties at the feet of the Lord and measureless grace will strengthen you. He will watch over his lovers, never letting them slip or be overthrown. He will send all my enemies to the pit of destruction. Murderers and liars and betrayers will face an untimely death. But my life's hope and trust is in you and you'll never fail to rescue me. David reminds us that there are at least three things that we do when we make the decision to give it over to God. And this is where our hope is. Number one, call on God. At the end of this text, he says in verse 16 out of the ESV, but I call on God. And David uses a term that says, I ascribe to God as the answer. My problem, my life is a problem. My life is a query for me. My life is a puzzle. My life is leaving me more and more confused. And the answer to my life is God. God is always the answer to life's trouble. So I call on God. I appeal to God. I ascribe to God as the answer to the question of my life. But then not only do I call on him, there are times when I flat out have to cry to him. I love it because David says, I don't just, I don't just cry one time. I don't just appeal one time. No, 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 no. I don't stop praying. I never stop praying. In fact, look at verse number 17, evening and morning and noon, every morning I pray to God. Every day at noon, I pray to God. Every day at evening, I pray to God. I go to God crying out to God, letting God have it. Why? Because my cry is a statement of dependence on God. It is is to match the consistency and the intensity of what I go through. I need God every moment. I need him like I need my next breath. I need him like I need everything that's going on. And so I call to him often. I call to him regularly. I call to him because without my God, I cannot make it. So in the morning time, I need you, Lord. At noon time, I need you, Lord. At evening time, I need you, Lord. Every day I'm waking, I need you. So I'm going to keep crying to you. I'm going to keep calling to you. I'm going going to keep depending on you because I can't make it without you. I'm not going to stop praying. I need you every single moment. That's the lesson David gives. Don't stop praying. Cry to him. Call on God because he's the answer. 
Cry to God because that's a picture of your dependence. But then the third thing David teaches us is that we have this appreciation of contentment. Hope is best defined as this, this notion of undeniable expectation and giddy anticipation of the move of God. And you remember that the reason why you can realign your heart, your mind, your soul, your spirit, and your thinking in the middle of turbulence, the reason why you can continue to be rooted and built up, the reason why you can have Psalm 1 kind of faith where you go through what you go through, but you can be like a tree planted by the rivers of water whose leaves will not wither and will always bear fruit in whatever season you're in. The reason why you can continue to be that dependent. The reason why you can continue to say in the middle of what you're going through, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The reason why you can remember God is your light and your salvation. He is the lamp unto your feet and the light unto your path. He's the one that continues to cut the way out of nowhere. When you can hold on to who your God is, you can have this contentment that lets you know I've cast all my burdens on my God and he will sustain me. Verse 22, he will never permit the righteous to be moved. God is my God. He's going to keep me. He's going to anchor me. He's going to sustain me. I trust in him while he sustains me. I have no fear. Verse number 19, I know that my God's got me. So I'm going to just keep praying, keep calling, keep crying. And be content knowing that my God will sustain me. And when you allow this picture that David gives us to be the hope that you have for your life, you can say like the psalmist says at the end of that text, that very last verse, you can say exactly like him. My life's hope and trust is in you and you'll never fail to rescue me. Don't stop praying because your God is the same God that David appealed to and the same God that is the answer to your problematic life, who is the one who hears you as you cry morning, as you cry noon and you cry at night, who will give you contentment with everything that's going on. He will sustain you. You keep on holding on to him. You keep on trusting him and God will We'll do the rest. Let's talk to God even right now. Father, we love you. We thank you. We bless you and we praise you for being our God. We thank you so much for allowing us the privilege of being able to come to you, the privilege of being able to lean in on you, the privilege, Lord God, of, of, of watching after you and adoring you with everything that's in our heart. God, we pray right now that you bless us like David to have hope to be anchored in you to be to be be, be those Lord God that are that are uh, uh, gripped by your power and and grounded by your presence father God I pray even right now that you bless your people as we lean in on you in a, in a, in a life of turbulence in a world Lord God where every day there seems to be a new challenge where things drop on us and cause us to be devastated and cause us Lord God to have internal dialogue where we don't know what we want to do or how we want to do it. God, I pray that you help us to make the decision in those moments to call out to you, to be a people who recognize, Lord God, that you are the solution to our life's most problematic issues. Lord God, I pray that you help us to cry to you morning, cry to you noontime, cry to you even in the evening, Lord God, because you've taught us that because we need you like we need our next breath, we need you like we need our next our next uh, sustaining nutrition. God, we need you like we need our heartbeat. We need you in everything because you've taught us that through your word. Help us to practice it now in our life. Help us, Father God, to be content knowing that you're already moving, knowing that you're already answering, knowing that you're already providing peace. You're already providing hope. You're already providing the power to overcome. You're already providing the means, Lord God, for every one of us to make it through. We thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We honor you. We ask, oh God, that you give us what we need as we continue to lean on you in everything that we've got in our life. God, I pray in this season that you heal, strengthen, and renew. I pray in this season that you bless us to come through this COVID problem. God, I pray in this season that you keep our heads lifted high. I pray in this season, Lord God, that you bless your people to stay together. I pray in this season that you grow in us a desire and a need and a craving and longing to be more like you. Build in us a heart, Lord God, where we can be like David, be like those of old, be like those, Father God, who have hope in you because they live out the word that you've blessed us uh, to have in our life. God, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. Get yourself some glory 
in the faithfulness of your believers. And Father, we pray that you do it even right now. We thank and bless and praise you. And in the name of Jesus, we together say and we together pray. Amen and amen. Listen, don't stop praying. Be like David and have the confidence because you've practiced these things. You've seen God move in the old and you'll see him move even right now. And when life drops what it drops on you, don't allow the devastation to cause an internal dialogue that causes you to forget about your God. Instead, make the decision to cry to your God. Make the decision to call to your God. Make the decision to be content knowing that God is the reason why you have hope. Knowing that you can anticipate. You can have an undeniable expectation and a giddy anticipation of the move of God. Listen, I'm going to pray for you. I'm asking you, please pray for me and let's watch our God change everything around us. God bless you and God keep you. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I have come to receive, to receive God bless. I can easily wait for the harvest. Oh, I got a Hebrew to the devil. They kind of faith, they can know how to bless you, yeah. And it's mine. Yeah.